Hey guys, welcome to my Etsy channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another Etsy tutorial. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Facebook like ads to grow your fan page. So if you have an Etsy fan page at the moment and you want to grow it with people that are interested in your product and services, this is the video for you. If this is your first time visiting my Exe channel and you are new to Exe or thinking about starting your own business on Exe, this is the place to be. Make sure that you subscribe to my videos, um, to my actual channel. I actually upload weekly videos to help Exe sellers succeed on Exe. So hopefully you will like this video. Make sure that you give it a thumbs up and leave any any comments if you have if you guys have any questions about the tutorial. So, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do before you run a campaign on Facebook, if you want to have or grow your Etsy fan page, you need to have a fan page first of all, which is also known like a business page. So, you will need to create one. And the first thing that I recommend is branding. For branding purposes, I recommend using the name of your Etsy shop as the fan page. So naming it. So if your store is, let's say for an example, Nancy Boutique, that would be the name of your fan page. Um, I also recommend having a banner. You need a banner because when you are running a Facebook ad campaign to gain likes, um, the banner is what ex what um, Facebook shows to potential people that might like your page. So you definitely um, want to do is use the same banner that you currently run on your Etsy shop onto your Facebook page, and you will run you will add that banner, and that's the same banner that Facebook is going to promote to people interested in your product and services. So make sure that you have a banner before you run the Facebook ad campaign. Um, another thing you want to do is have some type of content on your actual page. Um, you don't want someone to go ahead and like your page and start following you and then for them to start browsing through your Facebook feed and you don't have anything in it. So make sure that you already have content. I will say if, you, if it's a new page, at least have five posts of relevant content related to your products and services only. That way, when people, you know, do like the page and start going to it, you don't want them later on, you know, unfollowing you because they're like, well, they, they don't put anything on their page. Or I signed up to learn more about wedding invites and wedding designs, but all they have is pictures, personal pictures or other things that are, are not related. So make sure that you have your page optimized, you know, make sure that if you are the brand, you have a picture of yourself. If not, you have a logo, make sure that you have a banner already uploaded, um, that matches for branding purposes, your Etsy shop, make sure that the name of the, the fan page is the name of your Etsy shop. Make sure that you have your tabs on the side filled out, um, your about me story, make sure that you have maybe you have integrated your Instagram account or your Pinterest or Twitter so other so they could start following you there as well and anything additional that you want to integrate as part of showcasing your product and services and who you are as a company and then also like I said earlier make sure that you have additional posts already placed in um, throughout the week or throughout the month that way they know that you are posting on a regular basis and that way they don't unsubscribe from your page. So that's the first step. Secondly, you will need to join. Um, I highly recommend joining uh, Facebook Business Manager. It's free. And the reason why you want to use Business Manager is that if you were to run multiple accounts, let's say you have more than one XC shop, this is the best way to manage your ads. You'll be able to then create separate ad accounts for every business you own. So if you have five Etsy shops, you could do five different campaigns for every different business page that you're running. And that's the best way to set it up and it's free. 
I will leave the, the link of where you can sign up for business manager below on this video. Make sure that you click below and you will find it. Um, but I highly, highly recommend it. So let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. So the first thing you want to do once you have your page set up correctly and you want to go ahead and start getting page likes, which is this is what it would look. So at the current moment, my my business page has 3,263 people like my page. So that's what you're trying to trying to do. What you're trying to do is get people that are interested in your niche, in your products and services to like your page. So therefore, every time you post a new product or a new service or anything related to your products, they get a notification that you put something on your page. So the first thing you want to do is head over to Business Manager. When you are in your Business Manager, you will select the page that you want to work with. So I'm going to do the one that I just showed you, which is Blog with Nancy. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to talk about selling selling wedding invites and things that are for weddings. So in my actual store at the current moment, um, I do sell everything about wedding design. So I sell wedding invites. I sell wedding signs, um, table numbers, seating charts, you name it, I sell it. So that's what we're going to stick with on this tutorial to kind of have an example of how to run an effective campaign. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and click on create. And here it's going to show you um, different, different campaigns that you could pick from. Um, so for today on this video, we're actually trying to buy page book, Facebook likes basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to select engagement and we're going to select page likes. Now I do want to say one thing. A lot of people, they go to other websites that they buy fake page, you know, Facebook likes. Don't do that. It's fake. So yeah, your page might look good, right? You, you have like, let's say 10,000 likes. However, these are fake likes. So therefore no one's interacting. No one is buying from you. So it's not worth it. Even if it's like, oh, you get 10,000 likes for like $50. Yeah, it's cheap. However, is it effective? Are you going to get any sales? You're not. So don't, don't waste your time with that. It's more valuable if you just go through Facebook and purchase real people that are going to be liking and engaging with your page. It's going to be more effective that way to drive more people um, towards your Etsy shop or maybe your blog or, or other areas where you want to drive traffic from Facebook to that page. So once you do that, what I normally do is that I like to put the month that I'm working with. So I'm going to put January and then I'm going to do Facebook likes this way. Later on, when I'm looking at all my different campaigns throughout the year, I could kind of compare and see, you know, if I want to pick two campaigns to kind of compare them back to back, um, or compare them like month over month or year over year, it's easier for me to know what campaign was what. So I normally name it. I put January Facebook likes, you press continue. And then what I do up here, it says add set name. I do the same thing. I just put page likes. Here you will select the page. If you have multiple pages, then this is where you have to come here and pick one page. So I'm picking my Nancy Badijo, and then I'm picking the one that we just saw, which is blog with Nancy. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to select your location. So keep in mind that you could choose from global regions. You could do different countries, different states and regions, cities. You could um, put a, like a zip code. You could do addresses if you want to be very, very specific. You could do designated market areas to show or exclude people in those locations. I'm going to leave my location U.S. Um, the reason because I sell digital prints or digital goods. So it's an instant download. I just email them to them or they download it automatically from XE. So I do target everywhere in the U.S. So I'm going to leave it a U.S. If you want to change it, um, you can. All you got to do is go here and play with this or type in the location you want right here. So I'm going to leave mine U.S. 
Now, the age, it depends on your target audience. If you know your target audience, you will pick your age. If you don't know your target audience, don't freak out because all you have to do is the first time when you're trying to figure out who is your ideal target audience, you make up your ideal target audience. You think about the answer, right? So for instance, if I'm targeting a bride that's about to get married, I would think that the ideal bride, let's say she's 25. So I'm going to change this here to 25. And then what I want to do is probably target from 25 to 45. I'm going to pick my oldest bride to be 45. Now, as you start doing ads progressively, like every month, you'll start collecting data and the data doesn't lie. And you'll start noticing trends and what numbers perform better, what demographics you pick perform better. And that's how you start developing your ideal persona or the people that you're trying to target. And that's how you start developing and start noticing that people from this age to this age buy more from you than people from this age and this age. So therefore, that's how you start developing your target audience. So if you necessarily don't have it at the given moment, this is one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you have your Etsy shop already connected to Google Analytics, then you could go in the back end of Google Analytics and you could actually see who is clicking on your products, is it female, is it male, how old are they, where are they from, and that's where you could get your target audience as well. But if you don't have one, this is the best route to do, is think about who you're trying to target and make an educated guess. And from and once you have enough data within 90 days, then you'll be able to go ahead and be more um, narrowed down that ideal customer. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this because it's recognizing Oh, different ads that I have done before. So from here, I'm going to say, I'm going to select my detail targeting. That's who I want to target my ads to, right? And this helps you define your audience. So you could include or exclude demographics. You could do by interest. You could do by behavior. Um, I usually do behavior and interest and even demographics, but more behavior and interest. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to put here wedding... And sometimes it takes a little longer. So there you go. So I'm going to put people that are interested in weddings. So I do want to target people that are interested in weddings. And then which, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at suggestions. And I want to find people that just got engaged. So like this, part, this, this right here, this demographic is people who are recently engaged. So I want to pick that one because those are people that I want to get, you know, they're planning to get married and they're most likely planning to get married. Now, what I want to do is also target people that have been engaged over six months now, right? Because they might be at the at the end right now that they're actually ready to buy, right? A lot of people in the first month or second, they might not buy. Some do. I personally, when I got engaged, like by the third month, I had like 90% of my items for my wedding. Some people are not like that. They wait till last minute or they wait till halfway in the in the engagement. So it's nice to kind of have that option. So I'm going to go ahead and pick six months. And then what I want to do is kind of go through it. And this one is newly engaged one year. So I like to play with six months and one year as well. So I'm going to pick that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick bride as well. And normally what I try to do is pick anywhere between five and six um, interests or demographics or behaviors. Um, so I'm going to pick one more. And I'm going to do, let's see, do it yourself. The reason why I'm doing that one is because there are brides out there that like to do themselves like, you know, they like to buy the invites and print it out themselves and they want to save money. And I sell digital goods. So that kind of goes hand in hand. So I'm going to pick that one. Perfect. So I have all of these right here. And this is going to target people that are newly engaged, that are, are going to be a bride, that are interested in weddings and interested in doing yourself projects. And hopefully that would target the my target audience. Once you pick your detail targeting, the next thing you want to do, um, you leave this alone here. 
Th what this is going to do is, is that if anybody already liked your page, they're not going to show that ad to them. And you want to keep it that way because you don't want to waste your money showing the ad to people that already liked your page, right? Because we're trying to get people that are new people to like your page. Now, this is basically how you set it up. Once you set it up, oh, one last thing, make sure that you pick the gender. So I'm going to pick woman because I'm targeting more women. Um, language, I don't necessarily say to change it, leave it blank. Now, unless your audience that you're targeting uses a different language that is not common to this location that you have chosen above, like United States, then you need to choose a language. So let's say that you are trying to target people from Russia, then you will need to change the language so it could fit the people targeting Russia. If you're trying to target a Spanish country, then you will need to change the language to Spanish because they only speak Spanish. So because I'm not doing that, I'm going to leave it alone. Um, once you have that set up, uh, make sure that you pay attention to your budget. You don't want to overspend by mistake. So what I normally do is I do a lifestyle, um, lifetime, sorry, budget. And that means that that's the budget I want to spend throughout the duration of my ad. So what I do here for something like page likes, I normally run like $100 a month. On my clients, um, I do freelance, so I do like $100 a month for them. Um, depending on their budget, sometimes I even go up to $300, depending on how fast they want to grow their likes. Now, once you select the amount that you're willing to pay, you'll be able to see right here who, um, how many people is going to reach. So the reach, it, it basically means this is the amount of people or like an estimated amount of people who will reach this ad, how many people will see the ad. And page likes, for 100 likes, you could get anywhere from 12 to 74 people that will like your page. Now, keep in mind that for $100, you could get up to 74 likes. But that's 74 people that are interested in your products and services. It's not just 74 random people. It's not that you went to a website and bought fake likes. These are 74 people that are getting engaged and within the next, they got engaged or getting married or been engaged within the last year that are interested in buying your products and services. So therefore, it, it is really cheap to get 74 likes, 74 new customers for just $100. And then if you target your page correctly and you're constantly updating relevant and valuable information in there, you're putting new items that you're selling in your shop, you're constantly updating it, and you're nurturing these people, they will turn into buyers and they will go and favor your items on Etsy. Or if you have attached your Etsy shop on your Facebook page, they can actually shop through your Facebook page through your Etsy. So therefore, this is not expensive for getting 74 new potential customers. So once you decide that that's what you want to run, you pick the date, when you want to start it, when you want to end it, you press continue. And I always, on every section where it says add name, I always do the same thing. I always put the same name. That way later on when I'm looking at it, I don't get confused or I don't have to be like, okay, what is this ad? I just like to have it all synchronized all across. Now, this is what customers will see. This is why I was telling you earlier, you will need a nice banner because they're going to show your banner to that person. So if you're selling wedding products like I do, um, then your banner should be something with wedding related, right? If you're selling, um, like this is, this is usually my business for helping Etsy sellers, then that's why I have that banner. So depending on what you're doing. Um, if you sell jewelry, then you should have a banner of jewelry. If you sell um, dog treats or dog bandanas or anything dog related, your banner should be gears, gears for that. They should be able to look at this and know, oh, that's a page about weddings or that's a page about dogs. And they should be able to make an informed decision within seconds when they're scrolling through Facebook feed whether they're going to like your page or continue and not like it. So it's very, very important that your banner represents what you're trying to sell. Now, for text, what I would do is delete. This is the one I have now because that's the one that I normally run. 
but because we're doing the what the wedding one i will say something like welcome let's say the store name is nancy boutique welcome to nancy boutique your one shop your one stop shop for wedding for anything and everything wedding every anything and everything wedding designs um please give us a like to stay updated with our latest designs obviously make it better than that make sure this is compelling make sure you tell them give us a like um say what you sell you know tell them throw those keywords in there um don't just say give us a like and call it a day you know mention your store welcome to nancy boutique your one-stop shop for anything and everything wedding designs please give us a like to stay updated with our latest designs something short sweet Make sure it's compelling, a little bit more compelling than mine. Um, that's all you have to do. And then at the end, I'm not going to run mine's life right now. By the end, you press continue. Um, that's all you have to do. And this way, if you start doing these campaigns every single month, you'll start growing your Facebook likes. The reason why I think I personally do this a lot for my clients and I love doing this is because Facebook already doesn't show your your postings um, to many people. Unless you go viral, Facebook really doesn't show it. Or unless you actually run a Facebook boosting to promote a post that you did. This is an easier way to, one, find, target, find your target audience. Find people that are actually interested in buying your products. Two, grow your Facebook page. Three, Start promoting products to those people. And three and four, start converting those people. Start making money from those people. Start either sending them to a newsletter so you can start collecting their emails. Or maybe you send them to your blog. Or maybe you send them directly to Etsy, depending on where you want to send your traffic to. But it's a really, really easy way to grow your, your business page on for Etsy. Or any additional business page. It doesn't have to be necessarily XE. This could go for any business out there. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. And I hope that you guys enjoy how to use Facebook like ads to grow your XE fan page. If you have any questions about this tutorial, make sure you leave them below and I will do my best to answer everyone's question. And if this is your first time visiting, make sure that you subscribe. Thank you for watching.